Wow, to YouTube, Unky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse. Look behind me, it's back up and running. So if you remember back in March, I believe that is, God, I cannot believe we're in uh, uh, September already. Just the year has flown by. I'll be glad when it's over. I don't know about you. But anyway, back in March, I started reporting to you I was having trouble with my Ryzen builds. And I've got, well, i got a Ryzen 5 1500. i got a Ryzen 5 2600. i got two of those CPUs and a Ryzen 5 3600. And I, I had nothing but trouble with that Ryzen 5 3600 from the get-go. And then it became a comedy of errors. Not only did we verify I had a bad CPU, but we verified I had a bad set of crucial RAM. Uh, and then it turns out I also bought a defective or an oh, just an old and tired uh, AMD RX 580 video card off of eBay. And that card had a problem as well. So once we determined we had a bad CPU, bad RAM, and, and bad video, we things progressed from there. I was able to put a Ryzen 5 2600 with the Gigabyte Aorus uh, B450M motherboard in here with uh, some good crucial RAM. And uh, I bought a brand new RX 580 video card, uh, Gigabyte card, or no, MSI card, put it in there. It's been stable. It's been working ever since. AMD replaced the uh, Ryzen 5 3600 CPU. I got some new RAM uh, for the system behind me. And, uh, well, let's just go see what I put into this machine. All right, so I've been waiting a while to get all the parts in. So AMD, in their infinite wisdom, chose to go ahead and RMA this Ryzen 5 3600 processor that I was having trouble with. And it's actually been sitting in here a month or more. Uh, while I was waiting to get uh, funds together for the other parts. Everything else you see here, with the exception of this, has been tested. This RAM has been tested, uh, both under ADA and other stress tests. Um, I've been waiting on the uh, NVMe SSD. Uh, I have a, a Gigabyte uh, GTX 950 video card. This is the old video card from my original set up when I started YouTube four years ago, three years ago. It's still a good card. I did have to jury-rig the, the fans on it, uh, jerry-rig the fans, uh, and plug it into a three-pin header, but uh, I got it to work. The card is reliable. It's been tested. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this into my uh, secondary workstation unit over here. Let me go show you that right now. So all those parts are going to go into this unit here. This is the secondary unit bench unit I have. Well, it's a secondary workstation I have. I can do video editing on it. I've got a webcam over here. I've got a microphone for it, uh, etc. So also in this unit, I have the B450 Aorus Pro Wi-Fi motherboard from Gigabyte. Now this board's been tested thoroughly with uh, Ryzen 5 2600. It's been tested with the RAM uh, on the bench here that we're going to use. Uh, it has been tested with the SSD drives that are in here. There's a there's one in here. It's a Kingston. So right now it's a big empty board as you can see. I've got nothing in there. Nothing plugged in. No CPU. No RAM. Um, we're gonna we're gonna put it in this unit. I could put it in the X570 that I got from ASUS. And there's the Kingston uh, SSD drive. Now I know this drive is good. It's been tested. It's got an operating system on there. So we're gonna put all these components back together, use this hard drive, make sure it'll boot, and then if it does, then we'll move on with putting the NVMe in there, etc. So we're going to run a series of tests once we get it in there. But for now, what I want to do is get the Ryzen uh, CPU in here, the RAM back in here, the video card, and see if it'll at least boot into Windows.
And let's turn the PC on and see if it posts. There it goes. Uh, I take it back. I wasn't being patient enough. All right, well, I don't know how it's going to respond. It's going right into Windows. I tried to go into Setup, but uh, it went right into Windows. It looks like it's coming up. It hasn't blue screened so far. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, see if I can log in. I don't know how well this is going to work. And you hear the fan speeding up and slowing up. Oh, it sees my network. That's a good sign. I'm going to go ahead and tell it yes. Now, keep in mind, it probably has the, uh, yeah, I'm sure it has the AMD uh, drivers in here. I had an RX uh, 570 or 560 video card in here. Now, you're probably hearing a fan speed up and down. That's the fan on the, uh, yeah, I'm going to allow access for MB. I had a lot of stuff running on here, man. Have to get rid of, uh, but this is more a proof of concept. Just see if it'll boot and not blue screen on me, and then of course I'll start loading the necessary drivers with this test SSD drive. We'll see if it makes it through there. If that works, then we're going to run Ada for a while on it. So a system stability test, then we'll run some benchmarks and see how it's uh, performing. Right now it's going to go through its initial I'm um, rejiggering re re Windows phase because it's detected a new CPU and uh, yeah, it should be okay. Now, I probably have, let's go out in here and look under under apps. Yeah, go under apps. Yeah, see I have, well I have AMD software. I'm going to go ahead and uninstall that. That's for the uh, that was for the RX video card. So I'm going to uninstall that. I'm going to install the right software for NVIDIA. Yeah, you see it's have the Adrenaline software. So far, so good. Uh, normally, I would have gotten a crash by now. Um, but uh, we'll see how it goes once drivers get loaded and the correct video drivers get loaded. But it, you saw it booted right into Windows without any errors. So I'll do some tinkering and playing behind the scenes, get it stable, and then we'll do some tests on it. All right, so I'm on the secondary workstation. It's been a little change of plans while I was in the middle of making the video. You know, initially I was going to go with that uh, GTX uh, 950 that I had uh, and put it in here, the one that I jury rigged or jerry rigged the uh, fans on. But uh, while I was waiting, uh, Amazon, in their infinite wisdom, decided to finally deliver the uh, GTX. Uh, 1650 video card that I ordered uh, a few days ago and so I managed to uh oh well, there we go that's not good driver power state failure I just got a blue screen while recording this video now this machine's been up and running it's been stable for days I just woke it up out of sleep mode and uh, normally I don't put my computers in sleep mode but it just woke up out of sleep mode so you're seeing something that is un <laughs> unplanned, that's for sure. Uh, it's probably a driver issue, I would imagine. Uh, I usually don't use my computers in sleep mode, so it's not going to be an issue. I'm going to turn that power saving uh, feature off. Uh, I've also installed a Mellanox uh, 10 gig networking card, and I've got a fiber connection. Anyway, there's a wire running over here that's actually 10 gig, that teal cable you see down there. So I'm going to attempt to turn off the power management so this thing doesn't go to sleep anymore. Um, anyway, I've got this unit up and running. As you know, our trials and tribulations on this, we had a, we had a bad AMD processor. AMD actually automated for me. It took them about a month to get me a new processor. The RAM tested good in here. I have run this on ADA. I ran it on ADA overnight and uh, had no runs, no drips, no errors. Uh, so I know it's stable. So the only thing that's changed on here is one, uh, power management is is on, and two uh, is a Mellanox uh, network card in there. I'm going to go ahead and change that right now. Uh, so I'm going to go into power and sleep settings. We're going to have the monitors turn off after half an hour and never go to sleep. 
and then there is a command you can run to turn off hibernation and here it is it's powerconfig.exe space forward slash hibernate off so I'm just going to copy that and then we'll go out to a command prompt as an administrator and then we'll paste that and that should turn hibernation off now I like to go ahead and do a restart after I've done that so let's talk about this machine a little bit yeah this this was the machine of never-ending sorrow and hopefully um, like I said the reason I delayed so long in RMing that processor to AMD is I'd never run into a processor failure before not not with those symptoms uh, but after eliminating RAM and uh, eliminating that bad video card that we had, the uh, RX 580 or 570 that I ordered off eBay a, a year or two ago, uh, that evidently has a failure on it. Um, I've gotten some stability now, and I'm going to load my flight simulator program on here, and this is going to be kind of my secondary backup machine and a flight simulator machine. Now I also have a a headset for this so I could do Teams meetings. I also have a, uh, a Logitech webcam so I can also be doing, um, you know, uh, doing uh, live streaming or I could be doing recordings from this machine as well. So it's going to have multiple uses. I've got an X570 motherboard so it's future proof. So if I decide to go to a PCI Gen 4 video card at some point, so this is up and running for now. I'm going to show you some of my test results that I have on the unit. It's fully assembled. Uh, and I know this video was not, you know, it was not consecutively done properly. It's also got an NVMe uh, hard drive in it or uh, SSD drive in it. I've, I've now switched over to NVMe drives for my workstations instead of the two and a half inch SSDs. Uh, I just find it gives me a little more flexibility and uh, they're a whole lot faster than uh, than a regular two and a half inch uh, SSD. So I ran Cinebench uh, 15 and Cinebench 20 on here, and here are some of the results I got. That was with the uh, GeForce GTX uh, or G yeah GTX 950. This is with the uh, 1650, yeah GTX 1650. If I can read the screen correctly. And actually, I recorded these screenshots on the other machine. Uh, so here it is, uh, the CB score, OpenGL score, OpenGL score with the different video card. And then Cinebench release 20, my score on there, uh, 3664 points. And then the super, super fast NVMe SSD drives, and you see why I upgraded to those. Then, of course, no benchmark would be complete without Unigen, uh, Tropics, uh, and all the other demos they have out here. Uh, and you can see each one of these was tested uh, with the uh, 950 and with the 1650 video card. I'm just going to randomly uh, put these images up so you can see the, the kind of frames uh, frame rate I was getting. Now, synthetic benchmark march, uh, benchmark tests are just that they're not any indication other than a ranking for you but um uh, i ran valley i ran uh heaven i ran uh, a couple others uh on here and i just wanted to share the scores with you so there's my valley benchmark with the 1650 uh buttery smooth no hesitation no no herky jerky motion nothing like that um, there's my heaven benchmarks with the, uh, let me do this one because this is the GTX 950. So my score was one, uh, 1741, but with the GTX 1650, it jumped up to, uh, 2556 for those of you that are, that pay much attention to those scores. I just wanted to share those results with you. Now, what you didn't see is I also procured the uh, GeForce GTX uh, 1650 uh, 4 gig card from uh, Gigabyte. I was going to get another RX 580 for this machine behind me, but then I got to thinking, uh, you know, I already have AMD. I have a card. I know it works. It's got a warranty on it. Why would I want to get another AMD card? I'd, I'd want to get an NVIDIA so that I can 
have it to compare to the AMD. So a card that is similar to the uh, RX 580, uh, but right now it's actually less in cost than the RX 580 because the RX 580 that I wanted went up to 219. I got this uh, GeForce GTX 6 1650 for 179 off of Amazon. And the only complaint is, is they they shipped it in the box without putting it in another box. You know, I like to keep the boxes. I don't know. I'm just anal that way. I ever since it, it helps retain resale value if you have the original box for it. I've just found. But they covered it with stickers, so I'm screwed on that, I guess. So I've got that in in conjunction with the other components that I've put in there. So basically this system is brand new from the ground up. Now I also have the, uh, what is it? The Asus, yeah, uh, X570P Prime motherboard, but I don't have any Gen 4 PCI devices. So we'll keep that board on hand. I've tested all three of these, pro well, I'm sorry. I've tested both of the AMD uh, Ryzen 5 2600 CPUs in that motherboard. I have, have not tested the Ryzen 5 3600, but I can always do that at a later date. I'll need to order, I would need to order RAM for that board and, you know, uh, whatnot. But uh, I'll just keep that board in reserve so that I can build, uh, if I decide to get an RX uh, what a 3080 or whatever those new cards are from NVIDIA or some other PCI Gen 4 card, I'll be able to switch to it then. So I'll just have that uh, Asus board in stock just in case. Now the plans for that unit moving forward are it's just going to be uh, a secondary or a backup workstation. And then it'll be, uh, I was, I'm a big Flight Sim 2020 fan. Well, a big Flight Sim fan. I haven't played 2020 yet. We'll see. But, you know, it's like 150 gig download. And... I want a kind of a semi-dedicated machine to that. So rather than putting it here on my production unit, I put it. I'm putting. In fact, I'm downloading it right now onto my secondary workstation, which is that Ryzen 5 3600 uh, with all the components. And then that'll be my primary play unit, my gaming machine, my flight simulator machine. And then if something were to happen to my primary machine over here, I'll have it as a backup. So that's what works best for me. So uh, there you go in a nutshell. AMD, thank you for arming that processor for me. Uh, you know, if if it if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes, I would not have believed that I had a processor fail. But uh, it just turns out I did, and then I had RAM failure, and then we had a video card failure. So the the word to the wise is don't buy used parts for for a new build or for a reduction level machine unless you have time to uh you know to test everything out and i know that but being the king of cheap sometimes has its drawbacks and this is one of those times when being the king of cheap had a drawback because you, you see how things just escalate so there you go youtube we hope you found the video entertaining and informative please it's important now more than ever that you like the videos uh, it helps with my search rankings, and as you know, if you watch my live stream, my view my views are down because it's not getting out to as many people. So, the more likes I can get on a video, the better I will be, uh, and the less I have to take on sponsors to mon you know to help pay for this channel. So keep that in mind too. Uh, in fact, donate if you're so inclined. We take PayPal, Patreon, and we have the join function now under YouTube. Uh, and, uh, you know, like I say, smash the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell, tell folks, you know, who might be interested in our content about our channel and, uh, it would be greatly appreciated. And don't forget to come back and see us again. And don't forget, we'll see you on the other side.